Hello everyone, welcome to this demo on how to integrate Amazon API Gateway to AWS AppRunner private services. I am Vamsi Pitta, I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. First, we'll see some use cases for this integration, followed by architecture overview, then we'll dive into the demo itself. For those who are new to AppRunner service, it's a managed service which will let you deploy, build, and run containerized web applications and API services without a need for prior experience on containers. By using Amazon API Gateway, you can improve security and performance of private services running on AppRunner. You can take advantage of native authorization options provided by API Gateway be it Amazon Cognito integration, or you can also leverage Lambda Authorizer for implementing or validating our API calls using a JWT or um, third-party OAuth providers. You can also implement throttling and caching for your backend API services. Though these use cases are out of scope for the demo, I just specifically want to call out when and why we would need such an integration. All right, so let's take a quick look at the architecture. From right to left, we have an AppRunner service running Django application, which accepts incoming traffic only from a VPC endpoint. We'll leave public access for the outgoing traffic to the internet. We also have a network load balancer which is internal and forwards traffic to the AppRunner service via VPC endpoint. We'll use VPC link to connect API gateway to the network load balancer. Let's switch to the management console. For the demo, I have created a custom VPC. So let's take a quick look at the resource map. So in this VPC, there are a couple of uh, public subnets and two private subnets spread across two availability zones. So I'll leverage private subnets for the VPC endpoints and also the network uh, load balancer. Let's create an AppRunner service. Search for AppRunner. Now click on uh, create an AppRunner service. For the source, you can either point it to a source code repository in GitHub, Bitbucket, or CodeCommit, or you can leverage a container registry, either from Docker Hub or ECR. So I'll be using a sample Django app I pushed uh, to ECR registry in my own account, but uh, you can use any public images or uh, custom images in your own uh, environment. For deployment trigger, I'll choose automatic and use an existing service role for uh, pulling ECR images. Let's give it a name. And I'll leave uh, the configuration default uh, for now. Um, since Django app listens on port 8000, I'll update that and leave everything else uh, to defaults. So auto scaling, uh, let's leave it default, even health check. For permissions, let's select an instance role for app runner. So this role helps uh, in case if you wanna access any other AWS services like S3, DynamoDB table or things like that. So this, this is a role attached to the app runner instance itself. Under networking, uh, this is the crucial part where we will make the service uh, private. So for incoming network traffic, select private endpoint and uh, we'll have to create a VPC interface endpoint. So let's do that. Give it a name. In 
in the VPC drop down, let's select the custom VPC. So I'll select the one which uh, with the side range 10.192. Security groups, let's go with a default security group for now, but we'll have to update uh, the inbound rules to allow network load balancer um, communicate with the endpoint. So we'll do that after we create uh, the service. For subnets, select uh, private subnets. So the way I remember here is uh, um, the CIDR range 20 and 21, these are private subnets. So let's select these two. and create that endpoint. There are price implications for VPC endpoints, so please take a note of that. Once we have the interface endpoint, um, we'll leave the outgoing network traffic as public access. For observability, uh, let's turn on AWS X-ray tracing. and click on next. A quick review, uh, we have an image sourced from Amazon ECR, uh, deployment settings to automatic um, and have a, a ECR access role configured. Most of the service configurations were default except um, the port, uh, which uh, a Django application listens on. And then uh, we have a custom networking setup. So a private endpoint for incoming traffic and public access for outgoing network traffic. Let's create and deploy. So while this is going on, let's go back to our security group and update the inbound rules. Let's copy the CIDR range of the VPC. While you're here, uh, select security groups. Select the default uh, security group for the VPC and click on edit inbound rules. Let's add a rule to allow communication over port 443 from the CIDR range, VPC CIDR range. So we are doing this to allow uh, network load balancer forward traffic to app runner service through the VPC endpoint over uh, 443. And it will also do health checks on the same port. Our next step is to create a target group for the network load balancer. Before I do that, Let's take a quick look at AppRunner VPC endpoint. Under subnets, you'll see a couple of IP addresses. These are uh, IP addresses attached to the Elastic Network interfaces for the endpoint within the, the private subnets we have attached. So make a note of them. We'll be using them um, while creating the target group. So let's go ahead by creating the target group. I'm in the EC2 dashboard. I'll scroll down to target groups on the left hand side. Create a new target group. In this case, for the target type, we are going to select IP addresses. Give a target group name. I'm gonna give app runner For protocol, choose TCP or port 443. Select the custom VPC. Then you can leave uh, the health checks default. Now, this is where we are going to use the IP addresses of uh, uh, VPC endpoint. So let's go back to the VPC management console. Copy the IP addresses. 
and paste it over here click on add ipv4 address and do the same for another ip address So once you have both of them over here, click on include as pending below. Then uh, click on target group. All right, so we have done one step uh, for load balancing. Now let's go ahead and create a load balancer. For the type of load balancer, oh, we're going to need a network load balancer and we'll make it internal, point it to the target group we just created. I'll give it a name as app runner internal NLB. For the scheme, uh, select internal. VPC, let's choose the custom VPC and the subnets uh, mapping should be private. So we want this to be internal, so we'll place them in, a, we'll place this in a, a private subnet. Okay, we have our basics covered. Now for the listeners, uh, we have write protocol already selected but let's change the port to 443 forwarding traffic to the target group we just created let's take a quick look at the summary we have uh, uh, a network node balancer which is internal um, hosted on private subnets forwarding the traffic to AppRunner VPC endpoint IP addresses it's a target group listening on um, a 443. Let's go ahead and create the load balancer. Okay, now we have the load balancer status active. Let's uh, check how the health checks are doing for a target group. Okay. Um, for both the IP addresses of uh, VPC endpoint, we have a status of healthy, so that looks good. We have a load balancer that is active. So let's switch to app runner uh, console to make sure the service is active also. Okay, this looks good as well. Now we have two more steps left, that is to create a VPC link for the API gateway and then create a REST API. So let's uh, switch to API gateway. Uh, yeah, the first step will go ahead and create a VPC link. Select VPC link for REST APIs. Give it a name. Select the target NLB, which is created, and click on Create. This will take few minutes, so I'm going to pause the recording over here until it's active. The VPC link is active now, so let's go ahead and create the REST API. I'll select a new API, give it a name. So this is a Django app, so I'll call it the same. So this is a classic API gateway, but I'm specifically gonna focus on how do we uh, use the VPC link to forward the request to the app runner service. So let's uh, create a resource.
and then let's add a, a method. I'll keep it simple, let's say any. Over here, you'll see an option to select VPC link. So let's click that and use this as a proxy integration. And then I'll say any. Select the VPC link we just created. In case if it doesn't show up for you, it will take a while and make sure the VPC link status is available or active. So then you'll see it in the drop down. Endpoint URL, this is where we divert the traffic to the app runner service. So you can grab uh, the service endpoint. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm back to the app runner service console. Select the default domain name from here. Paste that in the endpoint URL and save. So go ahead and deploy the API gateway. All right, so with this, uh, our setup should be complete and we should be able to test it. Let's go back to resources. Click on the any uh, method and click test. We'll send a test request uh, through a get method Click on test. There you go. We have a successful response from uh, our uh, private Django application running on App Runner service. With this, we have successfully uh, completed our setup and integration with API Gateway and a private App Runner service. Thank you for watching the video. Happy building on AWS.